Okay, so a couple weeks ago, I did a video on the TR8 um, and how I use it with Logic. So uh, I had a comment in the comment sections uh, that was asking how to actually set that up so that it runs with Logic. And so this, I'm going to do a quick video for you guys just on how to set it up. There's a couple of different ways to set it up in order for it to work with Logic. Um, one of the things is about the TR8S is that it's a uh, sound card. So uh, just plugging it up USB into your uh, DAW, whatever you're using, uh, let's just do with Logic. If you're plugging it in USB, it should be recognized as a sound card. Now I'm not sure, because it's been a minute, I'm not sure if you need to download a driver for it, for a Mac or if it's plug and play, but I think it's plug and play. So I think if you just plug in the USB into your USB port in your computer, when you go to Logic, and I'll go to Logic now, uh, you go to Preferences, Audio, and over to uh, your input and output settings for Logic, what you should find is in your drop down menu, you should see a TR, uh, TR8S option. And you want to just set your output and your input so that the computer sees the TR8S. So that's the first step. That's the first thing you want to do um, to set it up as a sound card. And this way, your volume control on your uh, TR8S is now the volume control also for Logic. Um, that's just the first step. Uh, that doesn't actually allow you to uh, get the input on all the separate tracks going in from the TR8S in. So there's one more step. Um, but what happens when you set that up is that you're now, when you go to select inputs and outputs, the options are, for instance, let me go do it on the computer real quick. We'll set up a new track, new track, audio, and now for my input and outputs over here, which is where I set the input and outputs for the audio, you'll see that you've got a couple of different options here. Um, let's make these mono tracks. So you can make it mono by just clicking this little button here. Now it's mono. Um, and now if I go in here, I've got input 1 through 14. So 1 through 14 are now the inputs uh, coming from the TR8S. Now what you want to do is what I've done, just kind of show you how I've got it set up as a template, is I've gone ahead and created a bunch of tracks. I've assigned the inputs already. And you'll notice that my first input on my first track is input three. And then I go from input three to four to five to six to seven, all the way down to input 13. And the reason why I'm starting on input three is because by default, input one and two are assigned to the left and right channel of the, of the uh, TR8S. So uh, that's just gonna give you a stereo in. So if you're looking to get them all separated, you wanna start from input three and go all the way down to input 13. And then that's gonna give you the bass, the, the snare drum, so on and so forth, all the way down. So now once you've got that set up, I just put that in a track stack and then I can just close the track stack for now. Now, once you've got that set up, you've gotta tell the TR8S to send everything out individually through uh, the USB. So I'll show you how to do that real quick now. So for this step, what you wanna do is you wanna hit the utility button here. When you press the utility button, you wanna use this value knob and scroll over till you get to uh, USB audio. Now it can either be set to assign, so I'm gonna hit enter for USB audio. Now I can set it to assign or individual. You want to set it to individual. Assign is when you're assigning the actual physical outs, outputs on the back. So you want to set it to individual. Once you've set it to individual, then what will happen, you hit enter. You can hit utility to get back to your normal menu. Now it's going to send each of the individual tracks through the USB into the computer. So I've selected individual here. Now all I have to do is open up my TR8S uh, tracks, which I have a track stack for, and I can hit record on all of them. So I'm gonna arm record on all of the tracks. And then if I hit record here, and I hit play here, I'm now getting signal going into the computer on all the separate tracks, okay? Um, now, you'll also notice, you'll also notice that it also recorded MIDI for me as well on a MIDI track, just in case I wanna change the sounds out with sounds that are in the computer. So that's a very cool function as well. Um, that's just me 
not using MIDI time clock, meaning that I'm not making the computer automatically tell this thing to play. I'm actually manually playing it and recording in. There is the option to uh, make the computer trigger this automatically, and I'll show you that now. So the other option is to tell the computer, make the computer the master and the TR-8S the slave. And the way that you do that is you're going to go to File, Preferences, General. Then you're going to go over to MIDI. And then for MIDI, you want to make sure you're selected on the Sync tab. It might be selected here in general. Just go over here, select on the Sync tab. Once you've selected on the Sync tab, you want to come down to MIDI Sync Project Settings. Select that. Now, this is where you can set up the MIDI clock. And what the MIDI clock does is it turns Logic into the master and it'll turn, it'll tell the TR-8 when to play. And uh, the TR-8 will take all of its BPM information and tempo information from the clock that's here in Logic. So I can go uh, destination, select destination, and, I, and then mine's already set to TR-8. It might be off for you. You can just click on this tab, go down to TR-8S, uh, and once you select the TR-8S, now watch what happens when I get out of this screen. When I get out of the screen and I hit the space bar to tell Logic to play, it automatically plays my TR-8S at the tempo set in Logic. So if I speed this up, uh, let's set it to 120, and I hit play, it's automatically triggering the TR-8S. So I'm sure what you're wondering is why don't I just use it like that all the time? Um, this is It's great to use the a MIDI clock when I'm just kind of um, uh, building the beat. But what I've found is when I'm trying to use the MIDI clock information and record all the individual tracks through the USB into the computer, that I run into a little bit of bugs. Um, sometimes uh, the uh, clock is off, so things kind of go in late. Sometimes it gets, uh, the processing is too heavy, and so I, I kind of get weird things happening um, with the buffer and things like that. So I think that's just a whole lot of information that's, that's being sent to the computer uh, via USB. So if I want my signal to be clean, my recorded signal to be clean, I find that it's just easier not to use the MIDI clock and then just to manually hit, record, uh, hit play and record and get it in the machine uh, or get it in Logic. And once it's in Logic, I can bump it. I can move all those tracks over or back if they're out of time a little bit. Um, but when I'm sequencing and I'm just building something along with the kit, uh, with uh, along with whatever's in here, it's great. It's it's great to have it on MIDI clock. Um, it'll play with your session in time. You can you know program. And then I go and turn that function off when I'm ready to record, and I just hit play and record here and line it up if I need to. Hopefully that's been helpful. Um, that's how I use it. Um, you might find something different. Your system might handle things differently. But for me, um, that's the easiest way to set up the TR-8S with Logic. This video was uh, based off of someone asking me to show them this. So I'm definitely reading the comments. I'm definitely open to showing you how I use any of this stuff. Just let me know. All right, you guys, have a good week.